New polls suggest that the Trudeau Liberals are plummeting in popularity. The recent numbers show that the Pierre Polyev Conservatives in the lead with around 41% support, followed by the Liberals a distant second with just 22% and the NDP at 20%. They're almost neck and neck. Many attribute the recent 11-point drop by the Liberals to their carbon tax. Now, to chat about this tax in more detail is Lethbridge Conservative MP and Shadow Minister for Canadian Heritage, Rachel Thomas, who joins us now from the Windy City. Rachel, welcome back to Bridge City News. Hi, Hal. So, so nice to be with you. Thanks for having me. You bet. Now, the Liberals, supported by the Bloc, voted against pausing the carbon tax on all forms of home heating. That didn't sit well with many of us here in the West who wanted the same break as Atlantic Canadians who were seeing a three-year pause on the tax for their home heating oil. Yeah, hell, I think, uh, you know, what ended up happening was Trudeau saw that his numbers in Atlantic Canada were plummeting. Um, and of course, in an effort to salvage his relationship with those out east, uh, he determined that he would bring forward a carve out in terms of the carbon tax for those who heat their homes using oil. Um, now, we know that this is only 3% of Canadians. And so while it helps them for the next three years, um, it's definitely still a huge detriment to those who uh, who use natural gas, let's say, to heat their homes, which, of course, is the vast majority of Canadians. So unfortunately, 97% uh, of Canadians are left out in the cold still having to pay an astronomical carbon tax on top of their home heating bill. Um, and of course, I'm hearing from, from local residents here in the community of Lethbridge who are saying this really is uh, adding to, you know, the tremendous burden that they're facing with regards to affordability and being able to make ends meet. Um, and so it's, it's really sad, actually, that the Prime Minister is choosing to, to divide our country in this way uh, by choosing one region over another rather than doing something that would be in the benefit of all Canadians. You know, it really is an affordability crisis. We're seeing our utility rates, the electricity providers. I mean, some of the, the bills I'm getting, two, three hundred dollars a month. And then, of course, now that winter is going to be setting in, you're right, the natural gas, that's going to be going up by quite a bit with our consumption. Now, there was actually a debate on a carbon tax carve out for our farmers how did that go? Yeah, for sure. So there was actually two debates, if you don't mind. Um, you know, so there was one where we actually asked for the carbon tax uh, pause, the three-year pause, to be applied to all forms of home heating. And unfortunately, the Bloc and the, and the Liberals voted against that. Um, and so that did not come to pass. And then we brought forward as Conservatives uh, another initiative, which was to carve out um, the carbon tax from farmers. So, of course, these are the individuals who are working hard to feed Canadians, and they're needing to heat their barns, and they're needing to run their equipment and dry their grain. Um, and all of this comes with an additional carbon tax added to the fuel that they're using for this. And so we've brought forward a, a, a private member's bill to take the carbon tax off of these off of the the fuel that is used by farmers, um, it was uh, it, it was successful in the House of Commons. It went to the Senate, um, and uh, it was debated there. Witnesses were heard from, and of course, it, it was an overwhelming uh, message of support for the carbon tax to be removed. Uh, however, senators were promptly instructed uh, by liberal ministers who, you know, gave them phone calls and sent them emails and, and you know, very much applied pressure to them. Uh, it was encouraged that senators would try to stall the process as much as possible. And so the senators have certainly followed uh, that directive. Um, and, uh, and so as of last week, uh, the bill kind of came to a halt. Um, that said, next week, the senators are going to be faced with a really tough choice. And, and ultimately, they're going to have to decide, do they support our farmers um, and driving down food costs? Or do they support Trudeau and, and wanting to drive up those costs? Uh, by applying a punitive carbon tax. And, and the senators are going to have to make that decision. And of course, you know, Canadians are very much wanting to make their voices heard. And uh, so many of them are writing to senators or calling senators and, and asking them to vote in favour of this private member's bill that would remove the carbon tax. Because of course, at the end of the day, they know that this is going to result in lower food prices for all Canadians. Because you know, right now, you're right, the food prices are going through the roof. Uh, the carbon tax impacting our farmers, our truckers, and we're seeing record numbers of Albertans and Canadians Canadians going to food banks. Yeah, and that, and that's over you know overwhelming as well. Just in terms of the concern that is caused there, you know, here in Lethbridge, um, you know, our, our numbers have increased uh, drastically at food banks. They've they've nearly doubled uh, in the last few years. And and I think what's alarming about that is it's it's folks who are working full time. It's folks who, you know, traditionally would have a fairly stable income and the ability to meet 
meet uh, their their daily necessities. But unfortunately, due to you know economic struggle and just where we're at as a nation right now, due to you know Prime Minister Trudeau's decisions, unfortunately, many Canadians are just not able to do that right now, and so they're having to resort to to using a food bank on a regular basis. Now, a recent report shows that the Trudeau government has failed in nearly every single one of their emissions targets. So, Rachel, if that's the case, why continue with the carbon tax? <laughs> yeah, it's a great question, and it's definitely one that is uh, backed by common sense, for sure. Unfortunately, you know, I, I think Prime Minister Trudeau just doesn't operate in that realm of, uh, of common sense thinking. And so, for him, it's very much about pushing forward an ideology without results. Uh, and so the ideology, of course, is that we need to do what's best for the planet. And in his mind, a carbon tax is what's best. Um, even though, you, you know, you, to your point, uh, metrics have not been met. Uh, those, those objectives that the government said that they were going to be able to achieve just have not been achieved at all. And so as a result, then you have Canadians who are paying more and more. And as you mentioned, you know, this is having a dramatic impact on how they're living life, including the use of a food bank. Uh, we also know that one in five Canadians are missing meals in order to try to make ends meet. Um, we know folks are not having access to the nutrition that they need to have access to, again, just because of affordability. And so removing the carbon tax would really make a huge difference in terms of what we pay for the fuel we put in our vehicles or the heat that we use for our homes or the groceries that we buy to put on our table. Um, and so it's really sad. It's, it's very unfortunate that Prime Minister Trudeau is not willing to let go of this ideological framework of his. So, Rachel, the Liberals' Rural Economic Development Minister Hutchings says the Prairie should really elect more Liberals if they want their voices heard on carbon pricing. Well, we have two, George Hall in Calgary, Randy Boissonneau <laughs> in Edmonton. I guess, what, that's not enough? Well, I, in my mind, it's too, too many actually help. But uh, nevertheless, to your point, yes. So these two individuals are Liberal members of Parliament here in the province of Alberta. And uh, yes, you're correct. The minister did say that if, if Canadians, you know, if more people in Alberta, she said, want to have their voices heard, then they need to elect more Liberals. Well, you know, here's these two Liberal MPs who totally ignored the voices of their constituents and instead voted to tow the party line. Um, you know, and I, I think, again, what's sad about this is that the reality, the daily reality of Canadians is not being taken into account, but rather, you know, this false ideological framework is being followed. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hearing from people here in my riding, but across Canada who just cannot continue in this way. Um, you know, they're having to make huge sacrifices for themselves, for their family, uh, just to try to survive. But it, it's coming to a place of great desperation. So um, we really need the Liberals to hear Canadians and to do the common sense thing. And the common sense thing is to scrap the carbon tax. Rachel, Bill, C-11 or the Online Streaming Act will be moving ahead. The federal government gave the CRTC its orders so that the legislation will be implemented. So what does that really mean now for a lot of online content creators? Yeah, I appreciate the question. Uh, you know, as as heritage critic, this is something that's near and dear to my heart, something that I follow quite closely. And so Bill C-11 ultimately gives the CRTC, the regulatory arm of the government, uh, the ability to control what people can see, what they can say, uh, what they can hear online. And so it will have a huge impact on our ability to use the internet as Canadians. Um, it will impact what we're able to access through our streaming apps, whether that's Disney Plus or Netflix or Crave. Um, it'll have an impact on what we're able to view through YouTube. Um, it'll have an impact on our, you know, our use of, um, of podcasts and the way that we access information there. And so really what we'll see is more and more information will be curated by the government and the way that they want Canadians to view things rather than Canadians being in control of what they want to see. You know, that's very concerning as well because us here at Bridge City News, our team, we have over 16,000 subscribers to our YouTube channel. Since Meta blocked a lot of the Canadian content on our Facebook page, where we had around 44, 45,000 followers, so it's making it a lot harder for those of us in independent media to get the message out, to get the truth out. Rachel, the Bank of Canada says we may not see 1% or 2% for an overnight rate for quite a while. In fact, we may even see another increase from the current 5% to help get inflation in check. Now, you speak with your constituents all of the time. How is this higher interest rate really impacting Albertans? Yeah. 
So again, you know, like the carbon tax, you know, certainly when interest rates go up, it has a huge impact on people's ability to afford the necessities of life. And so, you know, when when interest rates go up, it impacts, you know, the expense of our mortgages, it impacts our rent costs, it impacts food costs, it impacts everything really. Um, Because, you know, things within our economy are so much backed by loans. And when the loan interest rate goes up, then of course, those that are selling those goods that we're purchasing also have to increase the cost. Um, and, and so that said, it is having a huge impact on those in Lethbridge. You know, I'm speaking to people who bought a home, you know, maybe three, four or five years ago at a rate of two or three percent. And now they're, you know, maybe looking to remortgage in the next year and they're, they don't know how they're going to do it. Um, you know, they're feeling the crisis of having to pay, you know, one and a half to two times more for their mortgage. And at the end of the day, their paycheck hasn't gone up. And so it's a huge detriment to them. In addition to that, you have folks who are paying rental costs and, you know, with with fewer and fewer you know, places to live that are available to folks, um, they're just kind of trapped. And their rental costs are, you know, going up on them, but they don't have any other options. And so, again, they're feeling at a, at a place of detriment. I think it's important to note that really it didn't need to be this way. Uh, the reason we're at this place is because the government decided to uh, to spend an astronomical amount of money, and that's really what caused inflation to skyrocket, which then, of course, when inflation skyrockets, the cost of everything goes up. And then the bank tries to respond by you know, increasing interest rates in order to slow spending. Uh, at the end of the day, everybody gets hurt. And so I think that's really what we're seeing. We're seeing Canadians in crisis mode. You know, you're talking about mortgage rates, and uh, I just came off a four-year close mortgage at 2.79, and I renewed for a three-year close at 5.05, or no, 5.09. And right now, that three-year close mortgage has jumped up to about 6.5-7%, so it's, it's just unbelievable. You're right. A lot of people are finding it more difficult to make their mortgage payments, or maybe they'll have to downsize or even possibly rent again. Now, you recently posted on social media that our country's heritage minister, Pablo Rodriguez, gave $130,000 to Leith Maruf, a person who has a history of anti-Semitism. Ironically, he was given the funds to help with anti-racism training. Now, when you asked the minister about this at committee, what happened? Yeah, we had the opportunity to ask the minister about this. Um, you know, a number of months ago. And when he was brought forward to committee and asked questions with regard to this incident, where $130,000 was given to Lake Maroof, uh, the minister, you know, claimed ignorance that he wasn't aware. But we have documents now that have come to, to you know, to us uh, in, the, in the recent weeks that actually reveal that the minister did know that emails were sent to him, that he was made aware. And so, you know, to know that the minister misled committee uh, is alarming in and of itself. But I think what What's more alarming in this case is that you have an anti-Semite, and I mean a raging public anti-Semite. His entire social media accounts were plastered with the most vile posts one can imagine. Um, and this individual was given up over $130,000. These are taxpayer dollars. These are Canadians' dollars. Um, and to be given to a man like this to do, you know, supposed anti-racism training is, is just unfathomable. It's, 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 you know, I'm flabbergasted by it, as are many Canadians. And so more recently, um, you know, we found out that Leith Maroof was ordered to pay the money back, of course. Um, but actually, you know, more than eight months have passed and not a single dime has been returned. Um, and the Canadian government doesn't seem to have any motivation to go after him and to make sure that that's the case. And I, I think that's really alarming to know that Canadian dollars, you know, went toward this individual and that the government's not taking responsibility to reclaim. That. Rachel, you blasted our country's public broadcaster, the CBC, in calling them out for spreading dangerous, quote, misinformation during the Israel-Hamas war. Can you explain? I did, Hal. And the reason for this is because the CBC is a public broadcaster. And so it's the responsibility of the Heritage Committee to hold it to account. Um, at the end of the day, the CBC receives $1.4 billion from Canadian taxpayers. And so we expect them to report news that is accurate, news that is fair, uh, news that is is fact-based. Um, and, and what ended up happening was it, it came to my attention that the CBC actually instructed its journalists to refrain from calling Hamas terrorists. 
Now, Hamas has been referred to as a terrorist organization officially by the government of Canada since 2002, so for more than 20 years. Um, so for the CBC to make this decision, I, I thought was actually, you know, incredibly um, alarming and, and, and actually dangerous. But further to that, you'll recall that there was an attack on a hospital in Gaza, um, and the CBC reported that it was Israel that attacked the hospital and that hundreds of civilians died. Um, and they did this because they received their information directly from Hamas. Um, and so really functioning as a mouthpiece for this terrorist organization. Now, of course, it came to light very quickly after that actually Israel wasn't responsible. And actually, it wasn't the hospital that was hit. It was actually the parking lot. Um, and so even despite these facts coming to light, the CBC refused to do a redaction and they refused to apologize for misleading Canadians. This is dangerous because what we saw was an incredible uptake in anti-Semitic behavior and rhetoric. Um, and, and, you know, ultimately hatred towards the Jewish population within Canada, therefore putting them in danger. These are the types of things that result when a news agency, and especially a public broadcaster, doesn't take the time to get it right. And so it's incredibly alarming, actually, that the CBC did this and that they're refusing to take responsibility. You know, that's something we always preach here at Bridge City News as well. We'd rather be correct than first. You know, some news organizations are like, let's get it out there. Do we know for sure? Don't worry about it. You know, we'll retract later if we have to. And I'm like, no, 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 that's, that's a dangerous policy for any news organization. Rachel, before we let you go, what are your thoughts on the UCP looking into potentially pulling out of the Canada Pension Plan and creating our very own Alberta Pension Plan, which would apparently put more money into our seniors' pockets? Now, Premier Daniel Smith says more studying has to be done and a referendum will be held on the subject first. But what are your thoughts of pulling out of the CPP? Well, I certainly appreciate that Ms. Smith is taking the time to listen to Albertans and, you know, trying to do as many town halls as possible and get people to weigh in on this decision. Um, at the end of the day, you know, the reason why she's put in this position where this decision is even coming up is because the prime minister has actually divided our country. He's pitted one region against another, one sector against another, one way of life against another. And so as a result, Albertans are feeling incredibly misunderstood and ill-represented. Um, you know, our energy sector has been under attack for an entire eight years while Prime Minister Trudeau has been, you know, in power. Um, further to that, you know, our farmers have been scapegoated on multiple fronts and not given the support that they need. Um, you know, further to that, just our Western way of thinking and our, our, you know, our work ethic has not been appreciated for what it is. And so as a result, Canadians are hurting. Seniors are hurting. And so, you know, there, we're in this place where there's this financial crisis that has hit so many homes in the province of Alberta um, and where people are really wondering whether or not they have a voice in, you know, Canada's confederation um, and, and what our future is to be. And so, unfortunately, it's due to Justin Trudeau's policies um, and his, his desire to pit region against region that we're in this position to begin with. So I think it can be assured that under a conservative government, we wouldn't actually be having this discussion um, because I think we'd be unified as a country from coast to coast and people would be empowered to work within strong sectors of their choosing. Um, and to bring home powerful paychecks. And so Canada would be in a much better place altogether. So That's do you think we should pull out, though? Do you think we should pull out of the CPP? Go go our own with an APP? Yeah, it's, it's ultimately up to the Albertan people to decide. They're going to be the ones to make that decision. Right. Lethbridge Conservative MP and Shadow Minister for Canadian Heritage, Rachel Thomas, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks, Paul. Great to be with you.